Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is Confessions. I'm doing something new. Just in the, um, I don't know how this is going to work out. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing this, how long each episode or whatever this is. is. Um, but I want to start doing it. I know that here something tells me that I should. I don't know where I feel like I should. That was the cat and the dog. Cat knocked over the fan. It's going to be raw, man. It's going to be real raw. I still want to do community conversations. We'll see. I mean, I like it, but I feel like I need to do something else. This is part of it, I guess. Just my life, you know? Just want to talk to you guys about my life. For those of you who don't know about a little bit about my background, um, I'm like part white, part Japanese and black, half black, quarter Japanese and quarter white, probably some others mixed in there. Um, white man goes to Japan, grandfather, and uh, meets my grandma. There's my mom, and he already had a family back in the States with some other people, some white women. They're both, I'm assuming they're both white. And, uh, my mom is the only one, so she's like half Japanese and half white. And then she meets my dad, and um, he's black, and there, here I am. I have two older brothers, a younger sister, and a half-brother from my mom's ex-boyfriend after my dad. So last time I saw my dad... Shoot, I think I was probably like four or five years old, somewhere around there. And, you know, not growing up with a dad is hard. You know, I don't want you guys to like feel bad about what I'm doing. This is just confessions, you know, this is just all open. I'm just going to be all open. Um, you know, if you want to pray for me, whatever, it's okay. I just want to, I just want this to be real and authentic just to show you that I'm I I'm not perfect and I don't think anyone is and um it's so easy to look at the internet and look at people's lives from the outside and not to see the the realness going on in their lives you know I don't want I don't think that we need to always be like depressed and I need to you know I just I just want you guys to be comforted to the idea of regardless of what you see going on in people's life, it may not always be that way. And if it is, that's awesome. But we do need to self-reflect and just kind of realize that we're not perfect. So this is just raw, real me. <clears throat> I just got mad at my wife because just recently, and I just finished washing the dishes. I came home, um, no, I wasn't working today. Uh, it's just about December, 2019. This is the first, I guess, episode or whatever. And I come in my little office, not really an office, because there's no door, and my daughter can just come in here, run over the baby gate, and just jump in here, and she just puts my computer on the ground, and I'm like, I get mad, and I, you know, spank her, and my wife gets mad. And about me spanking her and so me and her start arguing and she runs in the room and she's in the room right now and I'm just like I've had episodes and I've I've hurt my wife and cops were called and stuff like that and it's terrible you know but I kind of want to just go in and you know talk about you know a little bit about my past and and kind of just tell you guys who I am and I don't think I know anyone who suffers with this so I hope this helps you too. I don't know what I'm about to find and I don't know what 
you're about to see either. So this is all just raw of what just straight flows out. <clears throat> you know, so my mom and my dad, and they got a divorce, and we moved to the States. Last place we were at, it was he was in the Marine Corps, and never really knew him. He didn't really talk much. I don't really remember what he even sounded like. I think the thing that I'm mad about is he never tried to reach out to us. And even with all this technology today, he still doesn't. But what could you do? You gotta let go. You gotta forgive and let him go. And so I think there's still some anger in that. And my mom deciding to not make the wisest choices in the world and jumping around guy to guy and going out to the bars every night, seeking love. So a little upset about that and meeting a man who she stayed with for about 11, 15 years and, you know, a drunk. And uh, he was a very angry man. So that rubbed off on us. Kind of pretty much broke up our whole family. <laughs> not going to say any names. I'm not going to get into that. So if he's watching this, he knows who he is. I want to forgive him. I think I've forgiven part of it, but I didn't know forgiveness, or at least I feel like forgiveness is, you can forgive people who've wronged you, but if there's other hurt in that, there's more to forgive, you know? Like, you can't really, you have to forgive every little action that they did. That's at least how I feel like I'm, I'm learning about myself and learning about people. I did not grow up with the best influence, influences. Father figures were, they were distant to me, you know, because the men who were in, in my life were very either abusive or just there to see my mom and dip out after they got what they wanted, you know what I mean? So I'm like, that was, and then joining the military, you know. I just, I don't know, man. What's the man supposed to be? I think one of the influences I had were pretty good was my uncle. He went to church and all that stuff, but, you know, he, I heard he did some stuff and, you know, that can taint you. It's tainted, tainted, taints your identity. Even if it's a rumor, even if it's true, it taints you about that person. And, and you kind of look, for me, I look through that, through that uh, lens of what people said about him. And I started to feel just, you know, like I just honestly don't feel like I trust anybody. <laughs> Straight up, you know? I think I'm mad right now. That, I never had someone to protect me. You know, my wife just protects her child and I just like, and she may be doing the right thing, but I, I feel like when is somebody gonna protect me when I'm wrong, you know, or when I was abused and all these terrible things that happened to me, you know, and I didn't forgive these people and I now commit the, thing, the same things that they did. I'm doing what was done to me. And I'm like, I would never hit a woman. I would never do this. I would never do these things. Sleep with a man and all this crazy stuff and do drugs and do be a drunk like my mom. And I did all those things. <sighs> That's a freaking right there. Hit me right in my pride, man. And I find myself still doing that in my life, just judging people. I would never do that. Even as a Christian, I would never do that. And I do it. Is that pride? Is that all just, all of us are just pride? Like, we just judge each other? I would never be like my dad, man. I'm never gonna leave my kids. I just like, man, after that, and it wasn't that big, but you know, it's just been, we've been a lot arguing a lot, just not recently, but just here and there, relationships, you argue. And the first thing I think about is leaving. I'm like, freak, I don't wanna deal with this. You know what I mean? But no matter where you go, you got to deal with it. You got to argue with somebody. 
with everybody at one point or another. You're going to have a disagreement at least. This is just my confession. Maybe this will help. I don't know. Am I wrong? Are they right? Does it really matter? But in the intensity of the situation, it does matter, right? You want to be right. You don't want to be wrong. Where does that come from? Is that sin? I don't want this letter just kind of, you know, I'm not trying to. I'm just letting it. I'm just talking, man. I'm just talking. Just being myself, being open. You know, I I not gotten into all that drugs, alcohol, just stupid stuff. Picked up the Bible a few times, been to church a few times. Wasn't ready to change my life. Became homeless and started asking questions like, why? Why? Why do why do people do what they do? Why do I do what I do? I mean, first it started with telling why do other why is everyone so you know whatever. And then I started to look at myself. When I became a Christian, I heard a message referred to someone like me. And I was like, okay, I've tried it all. Let's try to see what this is all about. I liked it, it was cool, you know, started to get my life in order, everything was great, and I still love it, don't get me wrong, but something started to happen, I mean, I started to realize I wasn't perfect, like really, really realize this, like usually I'm like, oh, everybody's just so, you know, everyone's crazy. When I first got baptized, when I first gave my life to Christ, when I first started walking with God, you know, I thought I was the stuff, man. I thought I was, I thought I was the greatest thing ever. Even way before that, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was judging everybody. Before I became a Christian, I was just like, yeah, I'm great, I'm amazing. I never even hinted at the idea that I was, something was wrong with me. Even after I like, you know, did all the terrible things I've ever done, looking back. And right now, In this moment, I'm just like, I was so evil. Still, I'm still making mistakes. I'm still have anger problems. I still, you know, the more I read that Bible, the more I look at God's word, the more I just, it's just like, there's just this reflection of myself. It's just like, I'm stopping. I'm, when you're born in this world, all you can see is the faults of everyone else. But when you become a Christian and you seek God's face, those arrows of other what everyone else is doing starts to turn inwards and all you see is yourself. And that's how I feel right now. I just feel like, what's wrong with me? You know what I mean? You know, if they weren't, if they wouldn't do this, then I wouldn't react this way. If, you know, if they were different, then I would be, I would be better or whatever. But now I'm just looking at it and just seeing myself and just going like, oh my gosh, there's something wrong with my heart. There's something wrong with my way I think. And it's getting better as I seek God and I'm learning. But it's a battle. It's a battle. You know, I don't know much about myself as I thought I did, right? I don't know much about people as I thought I did. So it's just like every day, man, I woke up today and I was like, all right. You know, those days you just feel like, okay, it's a good day, you know? And then by the end of it, at least days like this, you're just like, dang, I made it bunch of mistakes or you know what I mean just I didn't think right or whatever and I'm not saying every day is that going to be that way it's 
shoot. What do you do? When I hit my wife, and it happened on several occasions, one of them I got the cops called on me in. And I admitted what I did was wrong. Would I have done that regardless if I if that was done to me when I was younger? And it was. I was hit and beat up when I was younger. Or is that just part of our sinful nature? But that's how I felt tonight, you know, I, that rage came up again. And I was able to cool it down before anything ended up happening. But that's not just it. That's not, it's not just anger and rage and, and hitting someone. It's other things in my life, you know, I, I work as a cashier and, and I'm just like, I'm a man. And I'm not gonna put anyone on the spot I'm just going to look at myself and think that, like, I've struggled with porn all my life. All my life. I've not really ever really had a friend as a girl. I mean, I have here and there, but ever since that, you know, way of lusting after a woman came in my heart. I don't want to say I look at every woman this way. I'm not saying that. So don't give me ideas if you're watching. But what I'm saying is walking out of that, pursuing God out of those sinful thinking and stuff is a battle. And I struggle with it. You know, I catch myself looking at, you know, women in the way that I shouldn't, you know, here, here, whatever. And then just kind of thinking to myself, I'm married. I'm a Christian. I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be thinking this way. But I do. Or lying or skewing perspective of what really happened. Or talking bad about someone or gossiping about someone when I'm not perfect. I want to be a pastor. I wanted to, and I, I don't say I, I, I want to pursue God and I want to teach people about God. But when I go to church, man, yeah, when I first went, it was like, show your best, be your best, you know? But now I have this relationship with God and it's just like, it's all about this right here. It's all about opening up. Showing your failures, not like you're proud of them or you're exalting them and saying, well, well, if you're, you did, you lied. Well, I stole it. No, it's just this idea of just being open, being naked, being exposed and just letting everyone see that you're not perfect and you're okay with that. Finding peace with your mistakes, not that they define you because they only happen for a moment and then they're gone, but being able to look at the mistake that you made and go, oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh, well, you know, I made a mistake and, and forgiving yourself for that. And, and, and then in turn, if you can do it within yourself, if you can acknowledge your own mistakes, then you can acknowledge people's mistakes. But if you can't acknowledge your own mistakes, you can't forgive other people's mistakes. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That fulfills all the commandments. Love. And if you can't show yourself grace and mercy, you can't show others. So was that other thing when my daughter did that? I wasn't able to show her grace in that moment. I could show all these people grace all day at cashiering going to work but I can't show my own family grace is it because I think that they're mine 
Like, oh, these are my family, and I'm going to raise my kids this way. But I have no control of those people. What's the difference? My daughters are going to be grown up one day. Maybe they're going to watch this. I don't know. But what's the difference, though? I mean, yeah, there's difference. But why? I think one of the things that I hated about church, and maybe it was just me. Maybe it was just something that I, it was me. It was the Pharisee in me. But I felt like I had to be perfect. I felt like I, I couldn't show people my mistakes. So I put on a face. And it was just like, I couldn't just show people my mistakes and just them just be like, wow. Okay. It was like everyone would try to fix me. You know what I mean? Like everyone's trying to fix each other. Everyone has the answers. Just shut up and listen to me. That's it. That's all I want from you. You know, maybe I do that to others. Maybe I just don't listen to people and I just need to shut my mouth and just be like, wow. Even if I can't relate or if I can, me too. And that's what I feel like. Christianity, it's like, for me anyways, the churches I've been to, it's, you have a problem. Can you just share your problems with someone? without them judging you or saying anything at all and adding on to what you need to do to fix it. I mean, let's face it though. I mean, like, let's say you go to a therapist. Can they really help you? Are they perfect? Do they not struggle with anything at all? Right? Do they not struggle? Are they not sinful in some way? Are we all sort of sinful, doctors included, therapists included, pastors included, congregation members included? Have we all fallen short of the glory of God and perfection? So what is church, man? Why do we why do we put on our best when we're freaking terrible? I'm not saying we all should go there, you know, and just complain. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is why can't why is it why why can't we just be open and just be ourselves. And like I said, maybe it's not any of them. Maybe it's just me. So that's what I want to do. That's what this is about. I want to just show you guys my sin. Show you guys my life. Tell you guys how I'm feeling. And I'm filled with content, contempt, contempt, which is kind of like on the urge of anger, I'm guessing. You know, but at the same time, peace. Part of me wants to have peace, but the part of me, another part of me wants to be proud and find a reason to get mad now and to keep that reason going. I haven't been to every church in the world. I'm not saying I have. But the churches I've been to, man, they don't do this. Some of them do here and there. We reach those points, but we need more of it. We need more of it. Some churches don't do this at all. Confess. Confess. Why do you think nobody goes to the altar? Why do you think nobody even goes to church? Because they just feel so, oh, now you know Jesus. Now you're perfect. No. And that's where it's just like, the, that's where the Pharisees come in. The Pharisees are just these people who are just like, they're so unrelatable. Like they don't have anything wrong with them. They don't expose their sin to everyone. They only expose it to certain people. But I know we're all broken. Even the Pharisees were broken. Jesus wasn't talking about the Pharisees who were, for all we know, it could have been it could have been Matthew and all the 12 disciples, you know, Luke and John and all them. And they were the ones who were going to church and they were the ones who were, you know, and Jesus was talking directly to them. And they were the ones who got him crucified. And 
And it was just like, when I hit my wife, it was like the whole church turned against me. It was like everyone, they, made, they found out. And it was just like, I was just, I was just like, the way they looked at me, the way they treat me, it was just, it was like, it wasn't even like real, man. It was just so, I never felt so judged. So I went through that. I lost my job and got, I don't even want to talk about it, but I, I lost my job. at the same time and then my wife I broke I was like she was constantly complaining about like the weeds in the front yard and then I borrowed one from someone from church and then it broke and then she was like you're you break everything and then I hit her And then my church, then the church turned against me. I want to break, I want to, I want to break this and just say, whoever said that men can't cry, it's a fucking lie. Oh, women can't cry, but man can. Can you imagine to have two, two children, one a boy, one a girl, same age, and just saying, you can cry to the girl and to the boy saying, but you can't cry. Who made that up? That's a lie. I had a man tell me, you're the most emotional man I've ever met. Man, fuck you, dude. That's what my opinion is to that. I can't cry. I can't show my emotions. I can't show that I'm weak. I'm a human being just like a woman and a woman's a human being. That's a lie. I think it's a lie anyways. And that's just one of them. That's not all the other. Put on your best smiley face. I work with people. <sighs> Customers come to my line. And, How are you doing today? Good, 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 good. And I ask them, what's the good part? And I find out they're not actually having a good day. They're having a bad day. But why do they cover it up? Why are they lying? I don't want to do that. I found that I did that. I'm going to be the change I want to be. God can love us perfectly. But we can't love each other that way. I'm not saying we have to be perfect. We have to get to a point where we can talk to each other about these things. Whether it's someone we know or not. And to be... You know, not go back and forth. Yeah, arguing, well, my suffering's worse than yours. And it's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying just simply lend an ear. Because you may think that you're having a bad day, but somebody's having a worse day. There are a lot of problems I feel like can be dealt with if we were to confess our sins to each other. I had lost my friend. He just killed himself. Nobody even suspected it because nobody asked him. And there's people here in Battle Mountain, I believe, that are going to try to kill themselves or go to do something horrific. And nobody's even suspecting it or noticing it. Because everyone's in pain. Everyone's in pain. Every single one of us has some sort of struggles. We have to. We're human. Even Jesus had pain and suffering and sorrow. So I want to show you guys my brokenness. Maybe I hope that'll change. That'll change someday, you know. It's okay to be mad. Don't be mad forever. It's okay to be in pain. Learn from it. We're all judging each other like, we're, we're better than each other when we're not. I find out that people are mad about things that have nothing to do with me when they come to my line, and I would get offended off of them. 
And I'm like, oh, they always treat me this way. But I don't realize they are dealing with something else, whether it's throughout the week or the day or even their whole life. Nobody wants to listen to them. Nobody wants to lend an ear. Maybe it's me. I don't know. I want to be the change. I want to lend an ear, but I have to show you guys first. And that's why I do what I do. I'm showing you first. When I was younger, I would always blame my parents for things. Right? Like I just told you. But then before I knew it, I was a grown adult. Now the kids are looking at me. Now the people in the world are looking to me. What are you going to do about the world? How are you going to fix it? And I can't blame people anymore. Especially if I'm choosing to follow God. Jared, God asked me this. What do you want your world to look like? And I said, well, this, this, and this, and this, and this. And he said, do that. What do you mean? You do it first and watch them follow. But when you first do it, nobody does it. Actually, everyone looks at you crazy. What are you talking about? Do it. You do it first. Be the change. Be the example you want to see and watch everyone start to follow. You may be crucified. They may hate you. But you're speaking truth. You're doing something you believe. You have to stand alone. If I, come on, can you imagine? Like one of my goals was to be a pastor. I'm not even going to claim that I'm a pastor. I was just, I'll claim that I'm a child of God. I was just clicking my phone, making sure I'm still recording because the audio on the camera sucks. <laughs> you think that I'm just going to preach this message that I'm not suffering? Like, oh, yeah, here's the good part of my message is and, and uh, get your act together. It's one sided. No, that's why I'm doing this. I get mad at people, too, man. I people piss me off. I piss me off. I piss people off. You know, I get jealous just like anyone else. I lust after women that are not my wife, just like anyone else, even though they don't confess it, you know, and I beat myself up for it. I mean, the other week I masturbated and I was just like, what the fuck? You know, I was doing so well. And then suddenly, you know, whatever happened, happened. <sighs> This is just a, this is just, this, I'm human, dude. But when I dwell in the presence of Jesus, the presence of God, he, he allows me to feel like it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fall down. It's okay that you still struggle that's why I came. I came so you can be forgiven forever. My, my blood on the cross was to forgive you not only of your past, your present, but for your future and your eternity. It covers all your sins. No matter how many times you fall, I'm still going to pick you up. I'm still going to love you. You will never find that in a church. You will never find that on earth. You will never find that in your spouse. You will never find that even in yourself. Nobody's going to love you more than God. Nobody. Through your mistakes. Because if you really knew how much God loved you, Your mistakes wouldn't even bother you. People judging you wouldn't even bother you. But the fact that they do bother you shows that you don't know that God loves you. And I don't mean intellectually. I could say this for 20 years recording this or in person to you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. But until you actually open your Bible and really live the Christian life, which is just basically read your Bible and pray. And the church thing happens on its own. Going to church happens on its own. Everything happens on its own. Unless you read your Bible and just have a normal relation, talking to him, because he always hears you, 
you're going to care what everyone thinks about you. Could you imagine me trying to be a leader or a pastor and looking around and looking to the world and saying, you know, let's just say, for example, I was like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to come up with videos unless I get views. What kind of a person would I be? I need someone to approve me so I can do, so I can feel validated to do what I want to do. Is that how you're living your life? Because that's the more I seek God, the more I don't give a freak about what people think about me. I'm like, Psh, whatever. God loves me. Totally content. Not all the time I feel this way, but most of the time. And if I don't, it's because I've stopped reading my Bible and I stopped talking to him. I stopped talking to him. And that's what the, the problem in this world is, is judgment. Judgment. Everyone feels judged. And everyone gets offended off every and anything. Because they don't feel like they matter or their opinion. And then they have to go around justifying their opinion to everybody. Who cares? Who cares? Oh, I care. Just like the day that I walked around San Francisco, bartender would have served me because he said that I smelled. And I walked around that night asking every single person, do I smell? Do I smell? Do I smell? Do I smell? And I realized that they're not going to tell me the truth even if I did. And I had one guy tell me, who cares? And I was like, I care. You have to get to a point, not proudful though, proud with pride. And I don't care what people think, F everybody. Because that's just like disrespectful. But in a sense of like, okay, you know, someone comes up to me and I've had it. Someone comes up to me and says, I disagree with what you're doing and what you're saying. And it's usually not like that. It's usually just completely just vulgar and negative and nasty and just kind of like, and I look at it and I go, and before when I see this and dislikes on my YouTube channel, I'm like, well, <laughs> offended. I got offended. I got mad. Oh, now I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever, move on. Especially as a cashier, I get offended at people just just the way they treat me and all this stuff or I would interpret the way they would treat me. Now I'm kind of like, oh, whatever, psh, go on, we'll move on, you know, and next person, psh. not that I don't care about them, but they, but whatever that is, we'll deal with that later, you know. And I found out that a lot of big things in my life weren't that serious, you know. And I think that's where these clicks come in. The clicks come in. It's like, oh, you know, we're we're like this and they're like that. And we don't do that. And they don't do that. But in the end, God sees right through all of it. And he says, you guys actually all do the same thing. You just don't see it. Just because you're unaware of your own sin doesn't make it non, not real. You know, one of the analogies was just because you cop pulls you over and says you were speeding and you didn't see the speed signs, uh, sp um, you know what I mean? Um, doesn't mean that you didn't break the law. You know, just because you don't see your own sin doesn't mean that you don't commit a sin. You still, you just because you're ignorant, someone says ignorance bliss. No, ignorance is ignorance. Ignorance is just foolishness. You know, especially if you do it and then you still try to deny that you did it. You know, there's a difference between like my child, like she didn't know any better. But when she starts to understand what is right and she still doesn't do it. That's on her now. I mean, it's always been on her, but now it's just being dumb. <laughs> um, but. Within that being said, there are things that I do still intentionally for some reason. Does that mean I'm completely lost, completely forsaken? I don't really think so, but I think God still loves me the same, but I think he wants me to grow and learn through that, you know?
what if hell is in, is a, is a form of like eternity repeating over and over and over and over and over and over again until you finally learn not to do that or what to do, you know? Um, I'm trying to see how much time I got left. Ooh, I'm at 40 minutes. I don't think I can send this if it's too long. I'll stop at... Oh, I might have to stop soon. Within all that being said, that's what I... I don't... We all suffer in some way, like... We all have emotions. We all have conflict in some way or another. Whether you're built, whether you're born into a mansion, or whether you're born in as a you know poor, we all have conflict. Money and all that stuff does not fix it. It doesn't relationships. You can't fix relationships with money. You can't fix relationships with possessions. You cannot fix relationships with anything else. You have to learn how to build and grow in relationship, regardless. Regardless if, you know, you have all the money in the world. Or you're, you're the smartest person in the world. You may be the smartest person in the world, but everyone else may not be the smartest person in the world. You know, you may have this part of life figured out, but not everyone has that part of life figured out, and you don't have that part of life figured out. The only person who understands everyone is God. At the end of the day, you know, I said this was going to be raw, and I didn't want to include this, but whatever, I'll end on this one. Someone said this this to me. They said, this guy comes through my line. He knows who he is if he sees this. And I'm just going to say it. You can, it doesn't really matter to be honest. He's wearing this Trump hat. And I look at it and I go, whatever, you know. And he looks at me, look at that hat and he goes, Oh, you can kind of tell that I'm judging him for the hat. And I go. And it says, like, make America great again. That's a Trump hat, right? <laughs> so this is what I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> and that's the first time he comes to the line. And I just let him go. I didn't say anything. And I think he was. And then he and I think like he comes through again and he starts talking about God and stuff like this. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I don't say anything like about God when I'm at work because someone complained about it. And I just don't because I've done it before. And I've had a few people come to me and talk to me about God. And I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm, yeah, because <laughs> I already, you know, I already know if you know, if you don't know. Yeah, I have a really I believe I have a pretty strong relationship with Jesus. That's only getting stronger and only could. And I just like to listen to what they say and whatnot. And, um, so it comes to my line again. It was the other, this other week, day of the week. And I look at him. And he looks at me. I look at his hat. And I look down. And I go, hmm. And then he starts to really kind of like draw it out and basically say like, why don't you like my Trump hat? That's basically what he was saying to sum it up. Well, the, way, the way I got it, right? Interpreted it. And I looked at him and I said, the, what I'm thinking is make Mayor America great again. Right? That means like, let's fix America. And I'm thinking to myself, that's never going to happen. <laughs> and I say, you put your hope in Trump, Right? This is kind of what I'm saying anyways. I don't remember every word I said. You're putting your hope in Trump. Let's say I gave him an analogy. I said, okay, what would happen if a man has four kids 
and he leaves them behind. How is Trump going to fix that? And he looks at me in the face and he says, well, he can't fix that. That proves every point that I have to say about anything about Trump. Let's just say that Trump could fix that scenario. What about the thousand other people who are suffering from that? Trump's one person. Wait, there's not only a thousand. There are 80,000 people or a million. How many people are in the United States? Hold on. Let me stop there and just say, did you know in the course of your life, you will only meet around 80,000 people in your entire life? There are millions of people in the United States, billions in the world. If we haven't done it yet, how is it going to be possible? It's not. The only person who could do that would have to be in every location simultaneously. From the moment that they were born, from the moment that they die. That sounds like a work for God. Trump is not God. Trump cannot fix a country that's broken because we are each one of us are broken. And when I look at Trump, <laughs> I'm going to probably stop there real quick, but I'm just going to say he's not perfect. He's not perfect. When I look at the greatest celebrity or whatever or anyone, they're not perfect. How could they help me? They probably could in some way. But in every aspect of my life, no. Absolutely not. So I say this to say that. I, say, I do these videos for the people who don't know me. And for the people who need help. Because... I can't travel the entire world and meet every person, but this video can. I can't minister to every person, but videos can. I'm not perfect, but I'm a Christian regardless of my mistakes. God still loves me. My mistakes my past, present, and my future. And that's why I follow Jesus. And that's why I believe in God. Because I have a love that lives inside of me that tells me, no matter what, I still love you. And if you don't have that in your life, I'm sorry. But God still loves you and God has opened the door for you. The question is, do you want to believe it? Do you want to read your Bible? It takes faith to open your Bible every day. I read about all these people's problems in this book, and I can relate. <laughs> so I hope you can watch this and relate to it in some way and just kind of go, wow, if God can save someone so terrible as me, then he can save someone like you too. We're all terrible and we're all evil, and we all need help. And he's provided that through his son, someone who will love you no matter what. I thank you so much for watching. God bless.